So there I was on Twitter complaining about some of the curiosities of geometry and merging two surfaces that are separate but in the same area. And it actually gave me an idea for something I wanted to try with merging two completely opposite surfaces while keeping them completely separate topologically by just trying to shift the solution from one surface to another. So for this, I'm just going to select this cube and we will go under mesh tools and use sphere cast to turn it into a sphere. And from here, let's just press um, left click and since we're already in box cutter, we'll just perform a box cut. Alt X, we'll press X to reset. Really don't need to narrate the hotkeys since they're already on screen. And let us press shift A and add in a UV sphere as well and rotate it so it's annoying. Never want to make it too easy for ourselves, do we? In fact, doing this is going to cause this pole area to just be a complete pain later, I'm telling you. It's regrettable every time. I'm not doing it because there's a way to solve it. I don't know. It's just fun to leave it halfway solved because perfection is just so difficult to attain. So I want to mirror it across this shape, but it's rotated. So I'm just going to hide it, select this shape, this one, mirror it across this one, which means that when we bring back the UV sphere, it's also merged together. And from here, I am going to just select one of these shapes and begin drawing something like this. You know, if we leave it as just sharp angles, it'll be super easy. So I got to press B and roll it. You know, how many, how many bullets do I want in the chamber? Do I want three? Do I want up to six? Really, we're going to keep it to three just because I've been using a lot of subdivision lately. So let's just keep it somewhere negotiable like three and from here we can just press spacebar and apply that operation so let's take this in a locomo and it appears that we cut our uv sphere so what we want to do is bring back the boolean select this sphere and we'll just press q and use it with intersection so now basically we have two very different spheres of a to certain topological nature and it looks like we're going to also need to rethink having subdivision present or uh, having mirror present. And so these surfaces are just never going to merge right. But let's try our best to actually make them merge. And more than likely I'm going to fail, but let's just give it a shot. Control A, visual geometry to match. First I'm gonna get rid of these big end guns. We'll deal with that later. Let's get in and just see what we have. And we could also Alt X, bring up bisect, mirror to the back but we actually want to use bisect mod and from here we can just grab this delete as well because we're not going to need it we really need to focus on the front and getting this area to be at least topologically suitable for this operation and we kind of have more subdivisions in our sphere than probably desired but you know me my strategy is to protect the perimeter and hope for the best Hopefully there's survivors inside of the perimeter whenever we're done. But we're still on the honeymoon phase of subdivision. So I'm not ready to jump to the next phase of where we talk about how it um, is such a menace to society. But sub D is definitely a jerk. And everyone watching me probably knows that. Um, definitely not trying to play it off, but definitely want to start off um, talking about some of the fundamentals of subdivision, how it can benefit the workflow, and then move on to, you know, its limitations and eventual downfall. Well, not downfall, but downfall to me. So it used to be my main go-to, but there's just certain compromises it has with my results that influences my design, and I just can't live with that. As in, you know, with simplicity being the rule of sub D, everything that's sharp is turned into an arc without reinforcement. And with simplistic geometry, it gets turned into knots is the easiest way to explain it. But we'll work our way up to that. So now we're having to make some really hard decisions because we have a big cluster happening in this corner. And we definitely don't want to have a loop circumnavigate in the form because 
it's just too fragile for that but we really need this area to work out and making some really questionable decisions you know whenever it comes to subdivision i just always tell myself that complexity is um part of the problem and so every time i try to get complex with it it results in knots in the head so that's just sub d it's like a um <laughs> old school teacher it just beats you whenever you do bad with it but just keeping some rules in place you can at least avoid it from giving you a bamboo beat down somewhat most of the time you'll still receive a few knots on the head especially if you try to get weird with it so I'm always just GG relaxing the surface you know, I could have this try where it is, or I could mitigate it one loop over and make it this area's problem, like so. And we just start relaxing, and something like that can work, and then we're like, oh, darn. We gotta do it to the other side, too. So, let's just bring in a loop. Maybe one loop. This one, definitely redundant. How do I deem it as redundant? Because if we look at it, we see that it's just a point on a planar edge. So we know that that one can go to the next nearest junction. So these decisions of what's useless and what isn't, you gotta be able to make them you know, split, split second because you have so many of them to make. And so really there's no time to waste. I gotta keep myself talking or else I will fade away from you guys into the zone not auto zone just the zone all right and we'll just slide these over perform a reduction use a try in this area because let us just do this with knife performing some reinforcement some really experimental reinforcements because this is our apex of this area so by dissolving it we have compromised it so we got to really think how how much do i want to adhere to the mission parameters that were specified for this video absolutely is the result without failure is my second response we do not want to fail the mission so we will maintain the absolute curvature specified by our initial cut and everything that is extra to it can be basically renegotiated. So this is us renegotiating the geometry while still keeping the curvature. And so let us get in and begin solving these areas. We can solve this into a quad and then we can solve this into a quad, which leaves this area as a basically unspecified area, which we could also turn that into a quad. I mean, it's a, it's a, we could turn it all into a quad forever. We just keep turning it into quads. We start using loops to mitigate in order to create solutions for inner areas. I mean, really it gets, I, I hate to use the A word, but it's the best word I can describe for it, but it, it just gets so intricate and you got to really stop get some help i mean not for me i'm busy solving these problems as well so just post it but let's see how we done we add a layer of subdivision and we see that our form is held together pretty well we'll give this area an extra reinforcement as a cookie and this area gets no cookie it gets dissolved this edge is important. If I dissolved it, I would sacrifice a little bit of curvature. I can just tell because of how advanced it is. So we're just going to turn that into a quad. And this amount will not contribute to the curvature. So it can actually go. And there's no reason for me to solve this aside from just wanting to get a little bit more reinforcement in that area. Which isn't even needed. But we see that that area is pretty well held. That area is well held. And we're only about 10 minutes in. Just really warming up, talking about some topology. I mean, we could have done this a little bit more efficiently using a knife project and all sorts of fun tricks, but let's just have some fun with our topology. 
this area could also be used to reduce this area. So I'll press GG and then E in order to make it align to this edge, absolutely. Or I could press F to align it with this one. And we're able to just slide that around while still keeping the curvature. So like I discussed in a previous video, I wasn't actually aware of that. There's so much to just Blender itself that, you know, just jumping straight into add-ons without experiencing it just uh, shortens your experience, shortens you on the quality of your experience because there's so much great stuff to just Blender itself that has to be understood. And it's your fallback. You know, I was talking with someone about subdivision recently and I was like, you know, the main reason I gotta talk about these workflows is they are your fallback. Like if you cannot do it using fancy pants add-on workflows, then what are you gonna fall back on? You gotta fall back to the program that you're using these add-ons in. It's the it's only logical. So now to finally jump to the exciting part. At the eleventh minute, let's save this file. You know, I haven't saved using the option to control click inside of power save to bring up the dialog where we can just call this topo study and we just call this fear and this is our first fear guys so i don't know maybe we'll revisit the topic so let's get out of local mode and we look at our uv sphere and this one's just not going to go right in fact let's add a layer of subdivision to it so it turns into a rock and i'm not meaning a rock like you would see outside i mean literally iraq or wait is it iraq that's being taken over by a Taliban right now. Sorry, getting a little topical here. Let's press Control A, Visual Geometry to Mesh, and we will just perform sharpening, which means I can go into face mode and just select all of this unwanted geo and remove it. We can press Alt X in order to mirror this, but we see that our mirror is being weird. So let's apply all our transforms. Then we can mirror it properly, and we don't have to worry about all this. We're gonna make it work with subdivision, but this area is just not gonna work with subdivision. If we come out of local mode and we press Alt V and we look at this, you're gonna look at this and think, these two pieces were made by different manufacturers. And if we press Alt V and we look at the wireframe, it's very obvious that some major work is gonna to have to be done. So this is the idea that I came up with. I was complaining about it on Twitter as a shout out to this book, not hating on the book, just hating on uh, these topological issues that come up because they're such fairy inducing moments and there is no perfect solution but there's definitely solutions and I can't wait to get to those so I'm going to select this edge of our apex sphere and we are just going to right click and use where is it edge tools which is an add-on you can enable in blender or actually mesh tools part of edge tools are I think or something like that and we'll choose offset edges and going in the F9, we're just going to offset our edge about this amount. And from here, we're just going to grab this vert and press GG, but hold Alt in order to extend it on itself. And like I said, I didn't test this or anything. I just kind of was thinking about it. I was like, wait, uh, isn't offset edge the solution? Like literally offsetting edges and sort of planting the geometry isn't that the answer? I mean, not being dramatic here, but let's take this edge that we brought out. We don't even want the subdivision because we'll project the subdivision if we do that. And we select both of them, shift click knife. And because we're not in Blender 3.0, it's not gonna throw an error. Blender 3.0, we're just trading bugs at this point, but that is life. When you use an experimental version, sometimes you get the horns, but most of the time it's so good. So just GG sliding. And the law of the land is this loop that we just added, but obviously negotiations will have to be had. And with every negotiation, we're also compromising our result. I mean, surfaces are so nuts. One day I'm going to be wearing a straight jacket, swaying back and forth in asylum talking about surfaces, especially at this rate. But let us continue on. And we have to make some like really hard decisions because like I said, we rotated our sphere in order to make this video longer. So in case you're wondering why I'm not solving it in like 20 seconds and I'm solving it in like 20 minutes, it's because, you know, we got to swallow the key before we go into the um, watery vault. So this is where things really are going to begin to get questionable. In fact, I'm not even liking what I'm seeing. But 
we are going to need to form a few connections with some unsavory geometrical pieces in order to survive. So this is where we realize that the amount of points that it received and the points that we are trying to give it are not congruent. So we are going to actually, before we slide this away, we'll slide this at this area, but first we'll need to slide this point along this rail, this point along this rail, this point can go here, this point can go here, this point can go here, performing a reduction, and really we're left with a hard decision. How much surface are we compromising to make such a decision? Also, this loop, does it need to exist? Yes or no, answer right now, answer, at, no, I'm kidding. Um, I had a girlfriend once that was like that. Tell me now, what's the answer? <laughs> yes, answer. Um, let us continue. And we're gonna go ahead and just give it a loop. But first we gotta terminate it short. You know, just cut its ankles. And from here we can give this an, some additional reinforcement, perform a reduction. And we see that we've created this black hole of infinity right in front of us. Don't stare into the hole. All right. Got to move fast. Got to move fast because otherwise you will get lost in the hole. And keep in mind, we're just GGing. And I'm still, in my mind, I imagine this like tension scale of what's going on with the surface where I'm just imagining the surface being compromised by too much sliding and geometric reduction. So some pieces exist only to just hold the phone. Other pieces are just waiting for a better solution to come along because we could start solving this all the way across and we could begin bringing this army forward. But really we're just trying to deal with just this one transition, but looking into the hole, it happens. You can't, you can't just move past the hole. You're gonna look into the hole. So here we are looking into the hole, which means we have to solve the hole. Not pretty, but this be life. I mean, that's the moral of the story. I mean, there's better ways, obviously, but your fallback is, is important. You gotta have a fallback. If you don't have a fallback, what are you gonna do when you see a Python error? You're just gonna report it and wait and just tell your manager, okay, I had to take the whole day, Python error, it happens. Darn Blender, don't even blame it on Blender. Blame it on yourself. Get in there and solve it. You know, hand solve it. You know, whatever it takes. That used to be my motto. Whatever it takes to get the job done. Um, they started using it on the Expendables, so I can't talk. Uh, Bill Cosby also started using it. Um, but whatever it takes to get the job done. And so I just feel like, you know, like Fang Zhu, um, the concept artist, not the uh, guy about war. Might be, might be the same guy, but you just gotta have strong fundamentals. You can't just be running up in a program without some sort of understanding. Like I get so many messages about why does curvature fail? And so that's the point of this playlist. This playlist is to give the longest answer you've ever heard to why curvature and how do I get past it? Because, you know, people are like, oh, hard ops can't do curvature. I'm out of here. It's like, well, I mean, basically a Boolean is a Boolean. So I don't know why you're trying to specifically blame any one thing because it's a matter of strategy and solution, at least the way I look at it. And the ways I'm showing aren't the most optimal solution, but they are definitely my fallback. And I spent so much time in them that I've gone insane and become a fan of them. Like this is like my call center life right here. When life was simple, before I was um, a toll lord or uh, <laughs> a toll uh, lord like a L O R E, not I am lord. But we're just solving the surface, just having a casual conversation. But definitely the purpose of this whole rant is to just say, you know. There are definitely better ways. And I haven't even gotten to the point of exploring them. Like right now, we're just talking about those, those, those crazy fundamentals that everybody needs. Especially if you're getting in there playing with bull ends. 
You just think you're going to play with bullets the whole time. Never, ever pay for your crimes. Ever. And we could do this all day. I mean, I'm getting really intricate with the solution. And we see that all that intricacy is making us pay because of the area of the sphere. We, we're going to try shrink wrap reprojection afterwards just to give ourselves a little bit of help because this area is all terminating into a single point. So even our best reconstruction efforts is going to have to propagate all the way outwards in order for it to be an optimal solution. So we're going to have to hack it along a little bit, but let's just speed things up because I know you haven't got all day, but I could do this all day. I solved this all the way to perfection. And really you look at this example and this is nonsense. This is literal, literal nonsense. Like no one should actually have to solve this situation. I was originally going to do a video where I was going to merge a quad sphere into a UV sphere into an ICO sphere and topologically solve all of it for subdivision. But I don't know. I wonder if um, the point has really gotten across so far as far as just curvature goes because from here it'll only get more advanced but there's definitely a whole phase planned out for this so or definitely a whole um, trilogy planned out for this however I might be doing a video where I revisit the concept of a nut we're going to you know what? That's crazy. We're not going to negotiate with these terrorists. Get these points out of here. Get that out of here. We're getting all these lumps. So our negotiations are failing. And subdivision showed us that. So that's good. It means that we're actually going to face consequence. If I was able to get to a very fine result without any sort of consequence, it would only make the video more boring. But I'm a strong topological negotiator we'll see what we can do i mean i say that bragging now and watch me have to cut an entire section out in order to avoid looking like a chump because of the laws of sub d and how you just can't play around with sub d i mean you kind of can when it's real simple but when it's real complex not in the head not in the head not in the head just getting dinged with a hammer like a old uh, cartoon just getting getting knots all in your head that's how I envision it you know so when someone shows me a topological problem I just picture them with a bunch of knots on their head I'm like ooh got knotted up pretty good you know what I will justify this with the response you know sometimes that's what I'm looking for in a topological study you know people always ask what's it take for me to Look at their work. I just want to see that you tried. Because if you didn't try, then I'm not going to try. I'm out of here. Got better things to do. But if I see that, you know, you're a real person, why not? Let's, let's party. So let's select these two points, press J. Let's select these two points, press J. And select these two points and press J. And select these two points and press J. And we really cut out our work for us. Picking a fight with this sphere. Like, rotating the points directly at us, hitting us in the face, to show a completely irrelated topological kind of example with offsetting. I mean, I've completely messed this up. But, my, my producer is saying to uh, just keep rolling, or else I'm going to also receive knots on the head. So, let's continue. Hmm... You know, don't stare into the hole. Don't stare into the hole. You know, I just tell myself that as I'm working because if you stare into the hole, you will get so confused by what you're looking at sometimes with your geometry. But um, my favorite solution is reduction. Not, not the best solution. I'm not saying it's the best solution. It's just sometimes I'll look at something and it'll just look so bad. I'm like, oh, let's reduce it. Let's reduce it to the barest geometry that will hold that shape because it's the best. It's the best way to go forward. Not saying it's the best way for you, but for me, sometimes I just got to simplify what I'm seeing 
in order to just get in and solve some things. So work as you will. You know, you might want subdivision showing in edit mode so you could be fighting lumps at the same time, just endless lumps, the endless lump battle. But for this, as I look at it, I'm just seeing simplicity opportunities. Like, hey, can I sell you a timeshare? May I sell you a timeshare? And you over here, you're getting a timeshare. You know, all these timeshares. And solved out. So we're working our way out of this rim of terror. You know, this is Faluya for real. So we want to offset our terror to this local area and let's just select all four of these loops subdivide which means that this is now a quad that's now a quad so we have something a little bit better in our negotiation i mean we did some hard renegotiation with the surface and there's some steps we could have taken we could have up, up res it which is where we basically take it up one additional level of subdivision and begin solving from there which is always an option and I probably should have also explored that as well but I don't know lately I've just been obsessed with keeping the levels and just seeing what there is to learn with these low subdivision levels and what they possibly offer you know um, my normal job I consider myself kind of a bullion scientist I mean it's a weird thing but I spend a lot of my time just kind of exploring some of the howdy duty that comes up with bullions and how to mitigate it because if it can come up as an issue to me it can come up as an issue to you so I definitely don't like being caught off guard with issues that I don't understand so I'm in perpetual prep, uh, preparation mode uh, a bull's day prepper just prepping for the moment when when the bulls just get out of control and that loop went all the way across nicely We'll let it live for this area. I could tell you right now, if I put a try here, not in the head, not in the head, but we're just going to have to, we're going to have to roll that. And maybe we'll get double eights. Maybe, maybe we'll uh, get snake eyes and lose our entire hand at dice. So get rid of that loop. It's not needed. Simplicity is always preferable to complexity, at least for me, whenever it comes to these things, like I will, I'll simplify it before I start adding um, ampersands and, but, but, but to my solution, because you know, all of them are just knots in the head. So we're looking at this and it's actually looking a little bit better than it did before, of course, because we did a lot of hard negotiating on this. I mean, we could still get in and do some manual correction you know, this arc of videos is kind of like my ode to slide and how much I love slide. You know, if they took slide out, I would rebel. That's something that would drive me to another program. Just kidding. Um, Blender for life. So let's look at our merge. Still looking uneven. And that's because of all these lumps. So let's try helping it out. I'm going to shift A, add a cube, and we will press Q and use Faircast. And let's just give it five levels just to help it out and we're going to select this piece and this piece press q and add modifier shrink wrap and now this object has been shrink wrapped and if we hide it we see that it's actually now looking perfect however we took this up to like four layers of subdivision but it just goes to show that we did some hard negotiating in fact even though the goal was to try to get one perfect merge from another surface to another and I completely biffed on that example resulting in such a high level of correction it was the sphere we set ourselves up with the sphere and I still want to go in and do corrections but the amount of geometry I'm willing to add sometimes is proportional to the amount of curvature that I'm dealing with but also the intensity of the loop that I intend to keep. So if we press Alt V and we look at this again, we see that we were able to get a pretty smooth transition. I mean, we could also bring this shape back once again. Let's convert it to a wireframe at least. Not that wireframe. 
shade wire turn off wireframe we'll select this object this object add modifier shrink wrap so now these two objects are shrinked however we see that it's a little faceted and that's because if we shrink wrap the subdivision it's going to have to be a higher resolution there's probably some settings i can change on shrink wrap to make it evaluate a higher level of subdivision let's see right here let's hover over and read the tooltips just to see if we're able to smooth it out just a little bit don't want to play with the limit and you see how the corners just uh, get shrink a bit whenever we're dealing with the shrink wrap we could also under our subdivision under advanced a user pointed out that under boundary smooth you have the option to keep corners which will actually keep your corners so we could do the same thing to this as well it may not work because of the type of mesh that we're dealing with however this is shrink wrapped before it's even subdivided so now we've added a subdivision to this particular mesh and we can go under advanced and choose to keep our corners which is also now in the control tilde subdivision you can also now choose to keep corners but we see that our corners were not kept on this one corners were kept so let's just do the same thing where we just grab all the edges and we just mark them as sharp which then results in them being grabbed but looking at this we see that we're still receiving a few knocks in the head so the merge just wasn't absolutely perfect and we're 31 minutes in and i'm sweating because what are we gonna do what are we gonna do this thing's a mess let's reduce it to zero just looking at it and this is where i'm going to come up with one more level of neg actually i think i was clicking on the wrong object let's bring it down to zero bring it back up Let's see what it looks like with one layer of subdivision with two. And sometimes whenever I'm dealing with high poly modeling like this and the subdivision is actually just being really cruel to the mesh despite my best solutions, in my opinion. Let's also remove that edge, just making it quads, turning it into a tri situation. We could also do the same here, but that turns it into a double tri situation. So it's a ponder. Let's Alt V, go into wireframe, and what do you think I'm gonna do next? If you guessed that I'm gonna press Q, go under add modifier, and hover over smooth, and begin talking about super smooth, or basically the work that's been done with smooth, um, you'd be right. So if we shift click smooth, we see that there's an option for auto vertex group, and auto vertex group will basically respect the boundaries of the mirror and your red marked edges, meaning that whenever you add it, it will actually only smooth the area of the mesh that's not being caught in a boundary. So let's shift click to bring it up above shrink wrap and we're just rolling the wheel and let's roll the wheel again to bring it up another layer above shrink wrap. Let's take it back below shrink wrap and we're just moving the mouse, which will make it start looking like, start making it look like a, um, old granny but if we begin rolling some iterations in here and just looking at what we get we see that it could get out of control really fast so if we press i we can deal with the inverted of what our vertex group was set up but we definitely don't want that we want to go back to basically old granny and so if we press t we can actually change the type to use what's called laplace and smooth uh, there's a doc page that explains more about what this is in Blender if you don't understand it, but just by pressing T, we can actually go back and forth. Most of the time, I generally need smooth, but I need it rather low with a low factor because high factors can sometimes get a little bit out of control. We see that the modifier disables when I take it all the way to zero versus going all the way up. And we're just going to move it ever so slightly, just see if we can get something just a little bit better. And let's move it above shrink wrap and we see that it still has these knots in it so at this point my thought is to evaluate the actual mesh that's being casted to so if we press alt v we can enable wireframe but really we can just toggle off optimal display 
and we see that there still is a degree of fasting that's unequal to the amount of curvature that we're trying to give it. So let's press Alt V and look at the wireframe and then Alt V to toggle it back off like we're getting out of Freddy's world. And we see that we are trying some really advanced solutions in some really complex places compared to what we're trying to shrink wrap. And so shrink wrap isn't bad for assisting you whenever it comes to reprojecting things, but you definitely want to be aware of your geometric density and how it can affect you because while smooth was able to help a little bit, it, in the end it comes down to us looking at this mesh and what's being projected to it. So let's bring it up to something like, I don't know. Wow, I wanted to let you take it to seven, but let's take it to seven. And from here, let's press H and hide it. And we're looking at this and we're definitely getting a much finer result. Let's bring smooth above our shrink wrap. And we see that we lost quite a bit whenever we did that. So I'm just going to divide the factor by two. Now let's press Alt V and look at our solution. And let's also activate car paint because everybody loves car paint. And we see that just imperfect. And so what do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to hit it with the hammer. At this point, we tried complexity. So our only hope is simplicity. So for this area, back to simplicity, hitting it with the God ray of the sun. And this area, because of the way that the flow is going, we can't really um, renegotiate these edges as hard as I would like, but we are going to negotiate them harder than they expected. So I'm going to slide those all the way in. This loop possibly doesn't have to exist. And with that degree of simplicity added, are we able to topologically solve them to meet up absolutely perfect without normal transfer. Got to throw that in there. I mean, one of these days I'll, I'll talk in depth about normal transfer, but I'm really not trying to trash it as a workflow. Just, I am too into topology to be transferring my normals is another way to put it. Or maybe I'm too into surfaces to be letting my normals just be transferred, but who knows? Maybe my views on it are changing because surfaces matter and getting a perfect surface probably matters the most. Let's right click, subdivide. We'll place a loop here, which will help in the integrity holding of this. And that means that this is now a quad. Was it worth it? Everything's being shrink wrapped back so we can get pretty relaxed with our solution. But at this point, one has to wonder what is perfect. I mean, actually, when you see a delineation between the two surfaces, it's imperfect. So let's play with our subdivision levels, not doing anything. Let's play with these subdivision levels. We can actually give it an additional level and then shrink wrap it to this higher level and the viewport's going to hang for just a moment. And we look at it and it's actually a little bit more aligned, but there's still a delineation between the two surfaces. So I just wanted to get in and do a video where I tried to merge two very unequal surfaces. So let's turn off shrink wrap. Wow, shrink wrap. I've never seen shrink wrap be a slow modifier. But whenever you start dealing with the subdivision levels in this projection, definitely a slow one. So let's press Alt V, look at our wireframe. We'll select this mesh and let's just turn that into a solution instead of a problem. Just some hard decisions in here. Where do I want my tries? The question of the day. And of course, whenever it comes to a subdivision solve, tries just turn into redirect. So whenever I'm looking at a try, right now they're loop terminators, but 
after applying a subdivision, they become assistive to a loop. So we're not going to get very far with that. We're definitely not going to get very far with that. Let's simplify it. And let's actually go back a few steps there. Looks like I was hasty. We do want that. We'll give that loop there. Give that one a loop. Perform a reduction. This area will be able to be quadded out if we perform a merge in this area, we could just slide that back, which basically makes that a quad redirect. So this solution is definitely questionable, no doubt about the solution. But when we look at this at the end, after a degree of subdivision with reprojection, we're able to get away with it. And looking at what we merged together, which was just two terrible pieces of geometry, or, well, I'm not, saying that about my sphere. My sphere is beautiful, sorry. Let's right click, subdivide. We're gonna add a loop, grab this loop, slide it over, which allows us to quad that for this crucial junction area. Giving us something like that, which just looks a little bit better to me. So I almost feel like this loop doesn't need to exist. I know, drastic thinking. We're not gonna jump to that just yet, but which one needs renegotiation? I'm thinking it's that one. And if we just start moving this around our service, we've been looking at this mat cap too long. So let us just go back to regular shaded view. Actually, let's go back to mat cap, look at it with zebra. Zebra's so strange. And as a bat cap, I don't completely trust it. I feel like there's a real zebra to be made, but that one is our zebra. So we Alt-V, get out of wireframe, take a look at our meshes, and from here, let's take it on to the next stage. So Q, solidify, select this piece, Q, solidify, and wow, what a hang. I think it's the six on the subdivision levels that's doing that to us. But a mistake was definitely made. Why is the more efficient piece, the lower piece, the easier piece, the simpler piece, the one giving us all this business? It's not the one above that we made from an icosphere. It's from the lower piece that we solved off the bat. We got through that one extremely quick because the topology was ambiguous to say the least versus icospheres having such a very specific type of geometry to it in fact i don't even know what to say about this while i'm waiting i guess i'll give it a moment so as soon as i pause it it gave it back to me so sometimes i wonder if camtasia is choking it out too but i'm not going to blame camtasia um or as we call them um cami c no cami t you know, my boy Cami T. And we go back into solidifying. We see that it's a lot faster now. So not as fast as I would like. I mean, it's almost as slow as um, having exact Boolean's coin, but this is crazy. I'm going to grab the first one, go to solidify, copy the value, go to the second one, paste the value and move on with my life. So from here, we have two very different surfaces, two very different solutions. I mean, it was an icosphere. That's all I can say in my defense, like this thing was a darn icosphere. So now let us add a bevel. We add a bevel to this shape and we bring it in and Blender's just choking. That's subdivision. I haven't even got to the phase yet of talking about subdivision being a choke me daddy type of modifier, but let's control click this one as well to add a bevel. And so now we have these two surfaces merged together. We press Alt V, look at their solution and 
holy but Jesus. Let's actually put the subdivision at the end because I want it to look efficient. So order order be darn. I want subdivision to be the last one because we want the optimal display. And we take a look at our two surfaces and they are merged. I would say pretty good except this area is just imperfect to my eye. Just not completely perfect. Like I said, I can never ever pat myself on the back. It's like not permitted. So let us save this file. We can select both of these and just control click to give each of them a blank material. And let's just look at them in look dev and see what our result is. Maybe a different blank material on this one. But definitely a blank material that will um, show off the shading. For this one, we could just shift scroll through just random blank materials on blank ma on a material scroll until we find a value we like. And we could just really get in and be analytical of our surfaces. In fact, I'll press Alt VV so that we can find a different background. Maybe something like that. Maybe Alt VB to roll some lights into the scene. There we go. So now we just get in and we just scroll our exam. I don't even like what's happening with that corner. I feel like we could actually mitigate that by increasing our segment count. Nope. It's going to be because of a subdivision reduction of the mitering of these particular edges. If we look at the wireframe, we can see that it has kind of a patch formation to it. So let's say that we were getting weird with it. We wanted to get under bevel and play with the mitering because we have it defaulted to arc, but you could set it to something like patch. Actually, we're talking about the wrong mitering. We're talking about the inner mitering. So we can set this to sharp. Are we even, which mesh is selected? That one's always on sharp. Maybe, maybe I'm mistaken. We'll just turn that back to arc and get out of it. And it's because of our sharp edges too that it's so predominant on the edges. Like we could just unmark everything. And then now we have a basic subdivision mesh, which I probably should do instead. Same thing with this side. However, once you start doing that, we see that the boundaries are being compromised, which we could start playing with the crease settings on the solidify, but then things would just get a little bit weird. So continuing on with this, we're just doing a tour of our surface, just admiring that we survived this particular ordeal. Like I said, I was just talking about this on Twitter and I thought to myself, I was like, huh, I wonder if offsetting a loop and just making it absolutely congruent with the other side would actually do the job, you know, but the question would be, um, how would that work with a surface that's completely unequipped for such a thing? So I could either give this a loop to slide it out to recrease it, but that's so excessive. So I'm going to dissolve it. We're just going to select all the boundaries again. And we will go back to creasing it. Because even with that slight shading differential, I like it. That's my shading differential. It reminds me Bevel was here. And Bevel is still here. And we're just going across it just looking at it in fact let's give them both the exact same material so that way it's a funner read and we could just look at the reflection of the environment which I look at the same as a matte cap you know you could be 100% adherent to this view and getting it perfect by normal transferring but I don't know I feel like there's an invisible line that every artist must decide on what exactly is perfect and what are they willing to do to get to said level of perfection I see like a little not happening in this area so let's press alt V and look at it and we see that it is a try and there's another try right so if we get rid of that and we start rotating we see that those are the two areas right here 
which is a triangle junction area. This area that should probably just be all quad. If we renegotiate this edge, we sacrifice the cur this particular flow that keeps it congruent with the other one. So I'm doubtful of whether or not I should do that. Like I said, the question of perfection is one that I think is different to every user. But for me, sometimes just surviving the ordeal with something that's passable like this, I could live with that. I could actually live with that as a result, but I couldn't live with having to do that to 50,000 surfaces. So definitely just interesting of a study. Just want to get in and just talk a little bit about subdivision and different surfaces and definitely deal with something truly painful.